Okay. Okay. Yeah, now it's gonna loop there. Okay, okay, okay. Everything all right? Uh, I'm quite curious about the card game as well, but I guess I'm more curious about how they will set up this story. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's check this place. There are leaves around. Oh, already? Okay. Come on, serious suggestions, please. I'm not trying to write a thriller here. It's supposed to be an essay, you understand? An essay. That means facts and logic. Well, if it's facts and logic you're after, you shot yourself in the foot with your choice of research topic, didn't you? The Tataris Suna mystery. When so much remains unexplained, there's little to be objective about. Unless, of course, you restrict yourself to textual criticism. Yeah, well, this is my teacher's area of research. I can't change that. But it's fascinating enough without having to sensationalize it, don't you think? The strange location, the missing details, a mysterious person... Mm, I don't really remember everything that happened there. I want to write my essay on something interesting, and I'm interested in getting to the bottom of all this. That's the only reason I came to you. Yes, you came to me. So all the more reason to take my advice. The fact is, it's the dramatization that will make people want to read it. There's no getting around that. Uh, okay, but... Did one of them just mention Tatarasuna? But that's all the way in Inazuma! Is it just Paimon or is it kind of unusual for someone in Sumeru to want to write a paper about that? Uh, everyone here is just going about their business. Maybe it really is just Paimon. Guess people here are free to research pretty much anything. Still, let's go listening. Great! Let's go find out what this Tatarasuna mystery is all about. Alright, I guess I'll go with my textual criticism and your editorial direction for the first draft. I have a feeling that the missing Kabuki Mono will end up being the main focus of this paper. What's that? Ugh, if only we knew where to find that traveler. From what they say about him, this seems like the kind of thing he'd know about. We don't usually know about stuff. Uh, if we're looking for the traveler, that's me. Oh, you're the traveler, you say? Hmm. Hey, what's oh. with that face? Don't believe us? Uh, if you don't believe me, I'll go. No, no, of course I believe you. Actually, I first heard about your great exploits when I was still in Inazuma. This is my first time coming face to face with you and your mysterious silver haired companion. I couldn't believe my luck, and out of force of habit, I started. uh. examining the evidence. Sorry. Oh, so what? For the love of... <laughs> Sorry, we don't get out much, so our social skills are kind of lacking. Uh, Traveler, I hear you've helped many people a great deal and been to many places. Would you be able to tell us about Tatarasuna? Actually, we don't know much about that place either. In fact, we only came over here because we heard you talking about it and wanted to learn more. Ah, uh, I see. Sorry, I can't help this time. My teacher chose this area of research as a personal challenge. He said it's difficult to get into because even Inazumans don't know much about Tatarasuna's past. But who'd have thought that... Uh... If you don't mind, I'd love to show you all my outline for the book I'm writing about Tatarasuna. Oh, uh, hold on, Sawada. Don't you think that's a bit of a deep dive for a first read? Well, oh, fair point. 
In that case, please ease yourselves in gently by taking a look at Akaba's latest essay draft. Let me give you some background. This all started with the discovery of some records in Tatarasuna. The writings mentioned someone by the name of Mikoshi Nagamasa, who crafted a fine blade. But in the end, he threw it into a fire to destroy it, and killed his servant Katsuragi. Why? Well, no one knows. Mm, we've heard his name, haven't we? Apart from the swordmaker, his servant, and the one who wrote this all down, the records also mention a kabuki mono. This seems to be an Inazuman word for an eccentric stranger, someone who dresses funny or acts in an unusual way. That's right. Akaba's teacher has spent quite some time researching these events on the ground. This kabuki mono lived in Tatara Suna for a while before disappearing without a trace. And shortly afterwards, as Akaba mentioned, things got pretty ugly. So first this strange person goes missing, then a murder happens? Hmm, seems kind of fishy to Paimon. Yes, my thoughts exactly. So I helped out too. I asked everyone I could think of if they knew anything about what happened back then. And wow, did I get lucky! Stop shouting! This part's important. I just wanted to make it stand out. It just so happens that a friend of mine works at the government records office. He looked into it for me, and I can now confirm that all the aforementioned individuals did, in fact, live in Inazuma over 400 years ago. Even back then, Tatara Suna was already at the center of Inazuma's smelting industry. The man in charge was a government official named Niwa. Curiously enough, it seems like he went missing too. Wait, so there are two missing people in this story now? That's right! What's more, Niwa is a name with a lot of history to it. Have you ever heard of the great swordsmith clans of Inazuma? Oh! The swordsmiths? Yeah, um, like Ishin art and so on? Wow, yes. You really know your stuff. That makes things easier. So, basically, this Niwa was a distant relative of the Kaidahara clan, the last practitioners of Ishin art. Yeah, there's a bug here. <laughs> uh... Something then seems to have happened in the Kaidahara clan, leading to their downfall. I don't know the details, but taken in light of everything else going on around that time, it makes you wonder whether it's all connected somehow. The Kaidahara clan? Sawada, you left out the biggest detail of all. There's more. Oh, yes, of course. How could I forget? Brace your minds, ladies and gents, for they are about to be blown. Or maybe you won't believe your ears. I wouldn't blame you, of course, because in all my years as a writer, this is by far the most. Get to the point, for Pete's sake. According to information acquired by Akaba's teacher, the Kabuki Mono was not a human, but a puppet. A puppet? The Shogun puppet that the Electro Archon Mage should be ruling in a summer with her as we speak. Couldn't be her. Um, no. But those things happened like 400 years ago. They couldn't infer with certainty. The Kabuki Mono has to be the Baladir, but what was he doing 400 years ago in the Tarzuna? Aha! Judging by the looks on your faces, you do know something after all. Uh... <laughs> Clara Paimon hopes she keeps her mouth shut. Uh, no! Paimon just meant... Uh, how creepy! The way you described it makes it sound like a ghost story. I agree, it does. But considering that non-human races in Inazuma are by no means uncommon, spooky events are to be expected. And that's exactly what my book is about. Please, take a look! Hmm. Oh, a lot. Um, extra, Shamiya writes Tarasuna around 
during the afternoon, from afar he spied laborers walking along the mountain roads towards the factories, their shoes scuffing along the jutting stones. They walked like people convinced that so long as they reached the fire raging in the mountain valley, they might extract from it the gems beyond price. The wood that the side spear was ineffable beyond the beyond my description for those not present to witness it. A man barked a cheerful greeting and sprinted to join the procession. There, a towering character who stood half a head taller greeted him with a heavy slap on the back, and yet his sword were filled with respect. My eyes see me, Mr. Miyazaki. Uh, I cannot think that the return trip here from Inazuma City could have been easy on you. Uh, okay, he's kind of making this up a bit, isn't he? This can be exact history. Niazak smiled like a young man taking the first steps on their journey, expression relaxed. Why, Katsuragi, Inazuma is the realm of the Almighty Shogun. I sailed upon the fast ship, strode upon the swiftest sea routes, and what dangers could I have possibly faced? And what about the good news? There was some, naturally. Uh, the two bursts into uproarious laughter, row-housing the other workers until the past end. The young man dressed in a linen shirt and wearing a headscarf gazed into the dancing flames, the furnace before him. Uh, now the flames of a forge are like any other, for their intensity affects the resulting integrity of both metal and blade. Uh, so too, then, was the Flame Watcher an unusual individual. At his fingertips sat a lizard, and on his face he wore a smile. The workshop was huge, and the furnace was deeper within. A reasonable person might think that there should have been many working alongside the Watcher, yet he stood alone. When only when Katsuragi and Miyazaki strolled into the room did the Watcher turn. His watcher was Niwa, armory officer and administrator of the Tarazuna. Born in the, to the Niwa clan, which served as one of the three pillars of the Ishin art. Niwa never argued that with his siblings and was a worthy successor by all accounts. The post he received as a result of his high standing with those in power served as a statement unto itself. Miyazaki handled handed a uh, well-bundled text to Niwa as he adjusted his expression and said, and said, It is as you have said, sir. The elders of your clan in the city do not think highly of our plan, yet I still believe it to be worth a try. As such, I have found some proper vendors and procured the materials that you requested. New studied the text and nodded. We should try some of these new forging techniques. Uh, whether Kaidehara says yay or nay. Katsuran frowned, and with, his, with a sigh he said, Forging is a precise and difficult undertaking. You know this better than most, sirs. And still, you seek improvement each day with terrifying drive. Uh, should my lord Nagamasa hear this, the soreness in his face shall be heard hard to miss. New smile replying, and how goes the fortune of your lord's great blade, Katsuragi? Katsuragi neither wanted to shame his master nor lie to his two friends, and yet he could not think of uh, any way to deflect, and so groused. I see your ears are as keen as your hands, sir Niwa. The jokes of us, a learned man, are as nothing before you. Miyazaki hid his grin. Upon hearing this, Niwa released the lizard from his hand into Katsurak's palm. But just as more words were to be exchanged, someone came walking nearby, their footsteps light 
with the celerity of youth. The head that peeked in was round and the light of the fires in the light of the fires looks like an oil jewel. Uh, the young man placed uh, some box food at the side and nodding he prepared to leave. Kasuragi called after him. What about your share? Aren't you going to eat? The young man, upon hearing those words, found himself slightly at a loss. After a while, he answered, Very well, I'll try it. You are welcome to the food. Uh, we all eat the same fare, after all. Niwa said. The man nodded and left, seemingly deep in thought. Extract 2. The kabukimono was by the coast. Sunset fell to the accompaniment of darkness. The bands of twilight showed themselves not, uh, for in their place the thunderclouds rolled, grumbling the omens of a coming rainstorm. Darkness filled the flesh of the sea and the dust bade the clouds to kneel upon the land, its supplication mirroring the kabukimono with knees bent and face pointed towards the water. None passed the way, and none knew what he was waiting for in silence. Time passed, unmeasured and uncounted, till a black cloud suddenly tore free from the sky and began to circle the kabukimono, bearing down on him like a nightmare. Though he was not aware of at first, after his studying gaze was refined by time, he understood this cloud had marked him him from the very start. Unbound, a fishing boat drew near, the lights of its bow flickering in and out of sight beneath the falling sheets of rain. A uh, mist unspooled across the, the area, stealing sight from the fishermen. Repeatedly he exclaimed, It is but dusk, how are my eyes, eyes darkened? Is there anyone that can deliver my boat upon safe tides? Uh, like a falling spear, the black cloud reached the bottom of the boat and was joined by its perfect fitness of direction. Uh, like a charging beast, they plunged into the shoreline. Scant steps away, the Kabukimono stood idle, slanting his head to study the green wreck. Not but half an arm was left of the one who had cried out for help. And with a plop, he landed at the Kabukimono's feet. He crouched to better study the object, straining against the urge to take a bite out of it. Yet he did not, for the dark clouds swirling down had already picked the remnants of the ship clean. The Kabukimono stared at it blankly. Like an awakening dreamer, when he returned to himself, the clouds had scattered, as if they had never been there at all. As for the ship, could it have been struck down by the storm? Who was to know? Not the Kabukimono. Structure 3. Katsuragi rushed to the doorway and shouted, My lord, things go ill at the furnace. I have searched for Sir Niwa, but there is no trace of him. And much time has passed since Sir Miyazaki left to seek aid, but he has yet to send us any missive. Look, Mikoshi Nagamasa turned slowly, his face grave as one attending a funeral. He spoke then, his words heavily laden. I wish not to say such words, Katsuragi, but Sir Miyazaki may never return. Katsuragi peered past Nagamasa's broad, stiff shoulders beyond the window. The clouds above boil in the water of black, in the waves of black, as if darkness now was the only weather. It might even morph into an abysmal beast in the vort that Arizona will hold. Over ten people had already perished. That was why, why Katsuragi recoiled as if struck. Yes, it was coming back to him now, in drips and drabs. Uh, that was why they had set out to seek aid. Miyazaki had been the first to set sail. The clouds had only just begun to form them. 
Traveling from the Tarazuna to Inazuma to ask for support was normally no great feat, and yet there had been no sight on sign of his return. Then a second ship was sent, followed by a third and a fourth, till the Kabukimono himself had departed upon the tide, times under full skies and ominous fortunes. It had been Katsuragi who brought him back and treated him as his own, and it pained him greatly to see the let go. Yet the situation in Tadrazuna was severe. Even should they sacrifice more lives, it would have been worth to worth it to gain assistance from Inazuma City. Niwa was gone and none could find him. Afterward, Nagamasa led a search party into the mountains and the area around the furnace, all to no avail. Folk began to wonder if Niwa might have encountered an accident, but word soon turned to suspicion, and they wondered if he had fled, unwilling to bear the sin of having caused this incident. The people grew ever more suspicious, and Nagamasa himself strained against his discontent and fury. His face had grown to resemble the whirling clouds above. Suddenly a figure flashed by. The presence did not go unnoticed by Nagamasa. He drew his blade and cut through he only nicked the silken veil the intruder wore. For a moment they swayed, and then, like a marionette pulled by strings, they moved behind Nagamasa, laughing darkly. Are you seeking someone, my lord? New or perhaps? Nagamasa bellowed in fury. You dare address Sir New directly? Yet the figure parted like mist before his falling blade, uh, only to rematerialize beyond reach, but not beyond sight. A ghastly apparition indeed. Was it you who steal my people? Nagamasa howled in charge, held back only by Katsurag's desperate grip. As his senses returned to him, he realized he was but an inch away from falling into the furnace. It seems that the rest of this work remains unfinished. On the exist, exist text, however, is apparent that this is a novel of fantastical powerful sensibilities, born from an imagination well utilized. That was too long. They could have told that. Oh, and please read my essay draft as well. Oh, no way. Oh, seriously? That's too much text. Details, Verona, View Credit Project. Yokama abstracted. Abstract. The Tarazuna area has always been a major pillar of Inazuma's smithery, smithing industry. Two incidents have occurred here, and the details behind the first are vague at best. I believe, however, that there might be a hidden story behind the events that transpired. Hence, this paper with them to analyze well, may have unfolded on the available da data. Uh, Closer. Oh, damn, that's too much. <sighs> this belongs to the series of works sponsored by the Verhumanus Velcutter Project. Has yet to be numbered. Tetris and I'm writing Rokanen, Mikoshi Nanamas, and Kabukimono. Introduction, this paper continues to and expands the work of my mentor, Mr. Rumi, in his report on the happily, happily hidden tales of Tatarazuna, and is intended to further hit this avenue of research. According to the data, the blade forging techniques of Inazuma were originally handed down from the Electro Archon, also known as the Riding Shogun. Using the arts they inherited from their Arco, the people of Inazuma devoted themselves to the process of forging. However, strange rumors that do not quite fit the steely nature of metalwork yet linger about Tarazuna, which was a central pillar of the forging industry. Yeah, I, I knew about that, but they shouldn't Inazuma's weapons be better than most. 
Uh, however, Transformers went for running in the summer, which is not so popular. There, uh, the Mikosh and Yuwa clans, along with an eccentric puppet, serve as the three windows of insight. We need to investigate the truth behind what happened. Body, strange notes from the Tarzana Arl area. Their contents are as follows. One, perhaps I overstep, but I think that Sir Nagamasa's mood grown was better when he forges blades. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna clear the chef. Uh, uh, the obsession uh, to cleanse the stain of the name Mikoshi must eat him. Also, Sir Katsuragi discovered a nameless eccentric while patrolling around Nazuchi Beach. The inspector so the inspector brought, bought a certain number of jade steel ingots. Sir Katsurag discussed matters of sneaking deep into the night while with the vice armory officer. Three, we a last mate single Nagamaki. We call it the Daitatawa Nagamasa. The inspector was in high spirits, and he and the vice armory officer. Nozomu was so taken by the beauty of the Taitatara Nagamasa that he drew a picture of it and he performed a sword dance with the one eccentric. Or, and we could not find that eccentric. The inspector flew into a rage and slashed Katsuragi. The great blade cut deep into the flesh, cast his own Nagamaki into the furnace, fl furnace flame. Nozomu could not abide by their order, and grew the completely melted weapon out of the furnace. He was hurriedly burnt. Uh, 5. Nozomu died that night, and they're saying that while Sir Katsuragi may have committed more things, he it was out of the goodness of his heart. 6. Kinjiro hid the Nagamaki and Nozomu's drawing in the arsenal. Nagamasa is harsh, but also knows right from wrong. But even so, he is not amenable to reason. His name indicates one obsessed with purity. It's still I and some households of Tatarazuna have not been blinded by the matter of Nagamasa's mother Chiyo, and we trust him. I also remain unwilling to forget the joy of creating the Daitatara Nagamasa with him, and the joy of watching that nameless eccentric perform the sword dance with Katsuragi. 7. Before we withdraw, we should have divided the arsenal key into three parts. Oh, there was that there. One for the inspector, one for the armory officer, and one to be left in Tatarazuna itself to prevent death. But we were in too much of a hurry, and neither the inspector nor the army officer could be found. So I was bold as to hide the three pieces within treasure chests in the Tarzuna. Uh, I don't remember if I got everything there, but I, th I think I got that. The seven notes mentioned prior have been scattered across the Tar Tarzuna area. Among the seven notes, six seem to be of good physical integrity. So they all look quite old, while the last one looks more recent. I believe that the first six notes and the last are of different time periods. So the gulf in years between them needs to be verified. The contents of the first six should also be related to each other, as the incidents mentioned are quite consistent with one another. Rumi was mentioned in Happily Hidden Tales of Tatarazuna, hereafter known as Hidden Tales, that in the past, researchers from Sumero had investigated the cultural histories of Tarazuna and Inazuma. Though the place has fallen into some degree of disrepair since the Hidden Tales were written, things have, Im things have improved since the time I wrote my original article. Regardless, what used to be an area of major industry remains a place most inhospitable. 
uh, in residents of Tatarzuna, 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 uh, may be found living and dwelling by the waters. The residents, when questioned, told the researchers of Tatarzuna's golden age centuries ago, when it was admitted administered by the Armory Officer Niwa, Vice Armory Officer Mizazaki, the Inspector Mikoshi Nagamasa. Yet the elders among the locals with deeper ties to the region also seem to stress the fact that there were strange rumors surrounding their homelands past. A great many of these rumors revolved around the yokai who are so very characteristic of Inazuma's, Inazuma's folk histories. A uh, small portion, however, repeatedly mentioned the word puppet. It should be known that puppets are neither traditional nor common yokai in Inazuma. This fact drew the attention of the researchers to dwell further, and eventually the following pieces of information came to light. A puppet did once appear in the Tarazuna. Its visage was elegant, its apparel impeccable, and the way it dressed hid all the joint lines on its body. I never pay attention. Her joints were hidden. He has joint, visible joints. Mm. If um, next time I fight the weekly boss, I'll pay attention to the cutscene instead of skipping it. Um, if no one were to mention that it was indeed a puppet, it would be hard to tell at all. Additionally, this puppet seemed to possess special joint lines that would fade with time. Oh, but, but, okay, so maybe he doesn't. Potentially even disappearing altogether, which would perhaps eventually make the puppet seem entirely human. The name of the puppet was known to almost none. Some folk claimed to have spotted it appearing around the Tarazuna, while others mentioned encountering it in the central regions of the area. Some even claimed that it would frequent, frequent the beach. The beach. Tales spread of it standing beside the sea and gazing across the waters towards Inazuma city. What it was that the puppet was gazing at remains a mystery. As mentioned earlier, the six notes all document a certain nameless eccentric the eccentric, which can also be read as Kabukimono, Kabukimono means eccentric. Damn, I should know what Kabuki means. Mono is like person, right? Shinobi, Shinobi no Mono is like person of shadows or something like that, person of stealth. So, yeah, Mono, I guess it's person, but I'm, I'm not sure. I don't really know Japanese. Uh, it usually, it is usually used in Inazuma to refer to a figure who dresses or behaves in a peculiar manner. It is understandable, therefore, why this character would have left such an impression. Should the people of Tatarazuna indeed have had a puppet in their midst incurring mass panic, good possibility, considering the coexistence between yokai and humans in Inazuma at large, then the puppet would have very likely become a local resident. What is less well known is if the Kabuki Mono was just another title for this puppet. Perhaps because of because it was uniquely dressed to distract attention from its more special characteristics. A workable theory, but one that still lacks enough evidence to support it. Still, it can be retained as an analytical lens of sorts. A list of individuals related to Tatarazuna has been compiled here based on historical documents for Inazuma. Starting from the administrators, the records are as follows. Yes. Armory of Sir Niwa. Full name, Niwa Hazahide. Uh, she was the inheritor of the Shin art and successor of the Niwa clan. His family, along with the Akame and Kaidahara clans, uh, were together known as the Ishin Sansaku. The records show that Niwa was a modest and intelligent individual who displayed remarkable talent in the administration of territorial, territory and people. His eventual whereabouts are unknown, 
but he was suspected to have left Arizona with his family following the incident. Vice Armory Officer Miyazaki, full name Miyazaki Kaneo, he was Niwa's second in command, his officer unknown, and he primarily assisted Niwa in forging and personal management. He was an affable, te he was of affable temperament and had many friends in the region, including one Mikoshi Nagamasa, Inspector Mikoshi Nagamasa. The successor of the Mikoshi clan adopted son of to Oni warrior Mikoshi Shio, and the younger adopted brother to Mikoshi Michihiro, also known as Iwakura the successor. With his mother missing and abandoned by his brother, Nagamasa alone bore the family's family name, striving daily to wipe the shame from their history. So records state that Mikoshi Nagamasa was a stubborn figure, he was also noted to be a person of moral virtue and integrity. It has been noted in various records that he practiced, practiced forging swords for self-cultivation, and especially requested special instruction from Miyazaki to further his capabilities. However, after the most famous blade that Tatara Nagamasa was forged, he used it to slay his subordinate, Katsuragi, for reasons unknown at present. Subordinate, Katsuragi. Katsuragi's full name and background remain unknown, despite all the material I have sorted through. I have yet to find more additional personal information regarding him. As one of Mikoshi Nagamasa's subordinates, he was a loyal warrior who had been saved by Nagamasa in his youth. From then on, he, he swore to stick by his lord through thick and thin to, and to give him life in service if it was but asked of him. Kabuki Mono, full name unknown, background unknown, for the many stories I have compiled, combined with Rumi's personal observations, this character might have been the puppet mentioned in the rumors. The Kabuki Mono was a figure of fashionable grace and gentleness. According to the hidden tales, he was brought back to Tatarazuna by Katsuragi and became a member of the community. When the Kabuki Mono first arrived in Tatarazuna, he knew nothing of cleaning, cooking, or any work of Michiko's nature. The locals taught him their skills over time, showing him how to clean his attire, dance, and craft small trinkets. Records state that the Kabuki Mono was there when the Daitatara Nagamasa was forged, though so his trail ends before Nakoshi Nagamasa slew Katsuragi. I believe that the Kabuki Mono was indeed the aforementioned puppet and that he quite likely had a hand in Katsuragi's death. It seems that the rest of this paper remains unfinished, one thing's for sure though, a lot of thought was put into it. That's all very interesting, but I wish he had told me that instead of making me read. Sawada was encouraging me to follow his more creative approach, but I think essays should be grounded in facts. I don't think explaining everything away with mysterious forces will cut it. Oh, how about if I plug the holes in Sawana's narrative with political intrigue? Like, um, I could put a turf war between rival factions at the center of the whole series of events. What's the effect? Wait, you're allowed to just make stuff up? Pretty sure you've gone from essay to guess a there. Yeah, sounds more like a novel. It's everything. Akaba, look, your teacher has researched this extensively. I've reached out to everyone I could think of. Whatever information we have now is all that there is to know. This is as much detail as you're ever going to get. Besides, if there really was a political power struggle going on at anything like the level you seem to be suggesting, what hope would we ever have of finding out the truth? Mm. No, he did. I can't possibly know anything that ever happened anywhere, can she? Because of her connection to Jeremy so uh, Also, they can always give an uh, excuse that, that uh, it wasn't corruption, but that thing at Arizona disrupted the ley lines or something. 
Ugh, good point. Okay, back to the drawing board, I guess. Give me some time. I need to find a new angle on this. Oh, there you go, we have some other stuff to do, so we'll have to say goodbye for now. Good luck with your essay! Alright, thank you. If you find out any more info about all this, please do let me know. Thanks so much. That was too much thanks. Hey, so that thing they were talking about, it has to do with the balladeer, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, then even if we did know something about it, we probably couldn't share it with them, huh? I'm not really sure why not. After all, we kicked his butt and got him locked up. Information about people like that is usually super confidential, isn't it? If you ask Paimon, Akaba should just pick a different topic. There must be as many essay topics as there are trees in the forest. There's no point in... Huh? <gasps> Alrighty. That's hey, wrong. did you see that? He literally just went by over there. It looked like... Like... The Balladeer! No, it can't have been. He got locked up. Oh, quick, let's catch up and see! I thought it would take a little <laughs> longer Time to go. find him. Time to go! He that have told me telepathically or something that what she was doing. Traveler, Paimon, there you are. Nahida, bad news. We just saw the balladeer strolling around in public. Did he escape or? Ah, it's him! <laughs> sure oh, enough, he doesn't have jobs. you're here. Questions. Please, allow me to explain. It was my idea to set the Balladeer free. We made a deal, and he's gonna do some investigation in Ermansoul for me. A deal? <laughs> you sure you trust this guy? What did you expect? Why do you think Sumero would keep me around otherwise? Or maybe killing me is all you can think about. But if that's the case... Why haven't you done it already? Don't flatter yourself. It was... Nahida said there's still some mysteries in you to figure out. Ah, so if it were up to you, you'd finish the job? Guess I had you all wrong. There I was thinking you were just getting cold feet. Mm, well, that escalated quickly. Not a good start. Could I ask you all to please calm down? But Paimon's worried about you, Nahida. Don't let him trick you. <laughs> it's not every day you see people questioning the God of Wisdom's judgment. Just when you think you've seen it all. Don't you dare try to drive a wedge between us! As long as the terms are reasonable, I don't think there's a problem in making a deal. Even with the Balladeer. Well, I, for one, have no reason to doubt you, considering you even struck a deal with a doctor. Yes, one in which I gained valuable information. You'll come to understand more about that in the fullness of time. The Paladir's power was all but completely spent after your battle. He's no longer strong enough to be a strategic threat to us. That puts him in quite a precarious position. Plus, he's a former Harbinger with knowledge of many of the Fatui's sensitive secrets. Being stuck here in Sumeru could make him a sitting duck, depending on how the Fatui plan to respond. Wait a second. Farmer? You mean, he's not a Harbinger anymore? 
I take no pleasure in saying this, but it seems as if the doctor had no intention of welcoming back a loser, so... So those two are like trash. Sometimes it's you using them, other times it's them using you. Most human relationships are this way. Certainly all the stable ones are. That's how it was between me and the Fatui. And also between each of the Harbingers. So as long as you have some value to offer, nobody will ever abandon you. But after recent events, even I have to admit that I'm not worth quite what I used to be. Really? What a fresh shame? <laughs> Well, if the Fatui are going to reevaluate my utility, I need to have a backup plan for myself. As we discussed, I don't like causing harm to living beings, and you said you need protection. So, why not join forces with us? I think these two have made their objection to that idea fairly clear, don't you? And they're your friends, so I guess you'll be siding with them. Then let's put that discussion to the side for now. We still have time. Today can be a trial run. Where we go from here will depend on how well we manage to cooperate today. All right. Then I'll do what we agreed. Good. Go now, and keep in touch. Nihira, are you... Are you serious about this? Yes. I have my reasons for this decision. In fact, I'm largely doing it for your benefit. Really? Yes. As I told you once before, there's information about your twin in Ermin Soul. Mm. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's the whole reason we came to see you today. So, you have an update on that? Mm-hmm. You may remember me mentioning that the Fatui had not included your twin's details in the Descender category. This is an extremely important point. It's possible that the Fatui have other information that even I don't know about. And since the Balladeer used to be one of them, he'll be better acquainted with this information than I am. He was granted the power to connect with Ermensoul when he almost became the god of a new era. Even though he no longer has the Gnosis, some traces of its power remain in him. He can still connect. The amount of information in Ermensoul is vast beyond description. Sifting through all of it without knowing what to look for would take too long, even for me. So I asked the Balladeer to search in Ermensoul for any information about the Descenders. He's more familiar with this kind of information and should be able to find it more quickly. Or if he likes you. Exactly! Or what if. You... Trust him! He's treated us as enemies every time we've run into him! I understand. But sometimes, everything is dictated by which side you're on. How things will go in the future depends on what information he brings back. And Traveler, I know what your heart desires most of all. Our minds have connected several times before. There is a corner of your heart reserved for an intense longing. A feeling of being all alone in the dark, searching for the one candle whose light still burns. As Sumeru's deity, it is my responsibility to be on guard against the Balladeer. But as someone who counts you as a friend, I want to do something for you. If this deal with the Balladeer can give you the answers you've been longing to find, then it's worth it. Thank you. It's my pleasure, really. You're Sumeru's hero. You've more than earned it. Hmm. Paimon's still worried about this idea. Is there anything we can do to help? I was going to contact you about that, but then you suddenly showed up on your own accord. <laughs> Seems like we have a telepathic connection. In fact, I was going to ask you to supervise the Balladeer on my behalf while he carries out the task I assigned. Even though he only has a fraction of his full power left, that's still a fraction of a former Harbinger. 
If you could accompany him, it would put my mind at ease. Of course, I'll be there to help guide you through Ermin's soul from the outside. Mm, got it. I'm glad you've been Great. Help. Thank you. Prepare yourselves. I'm going to transport you into Ermin's soul. Looks pretty different here compared to last time. The colors are gentler. Guess that must be because Sumeru's at peace now. Look at that. Hot on my heels. You know, you didn't have to cut your catch up short just to keep me company. Mm. Oh, but I guess you panicked when you realized that I might enter Ermin's soul ahead of you. Does he have a vision like that? Shut your beak, jailbird! No way a prisoner gets to be so smug! I understand that prisoners have to put up with harassment from the guards. But right now, I'm on temporary release. So maybe you should think about backing off a little. Sounds like a successful rendezvous. I need to be quite clear about something. In a few moments, you'll be entering into the innermost region of Ermensoul. It is an environment like no other, and the most important place in all of Sumeru. Just Sumeru? Isn't that like the center of the whole world or something? Unlike anywhere else, Ermensoul's inner region consists exclusively of torrents of information. You must put aside your differences, and be extremely careful as you navigate your way through. I know there are many grievances between you, on both sides, but it is essential that you remain calm after entry. This is as much for your own safety as anything else. Understood. Fine, let's call it truce, but only until this mission's over. Let's cut each other a little slack, shall we? We are going to be traveling together after all. Per my agreement with Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'll be at the front. It's my job to lead the way and get rid of any obstacles in our path. All you have to do is keep your pretty eyes open and try not to fall behind. <laughs> you sure are confident. Paimon will give you that. You make it sound like you're even more experienced at adventuring than us. Well, he's got 300 years off. Well, we don't have him in yet. He has... If there are no years. further objections, I suggest we get going. Or did you need some time to mentally prepare yourselves? Ew! Ugh, the snark on this guy! It's unbearable! There's no need for all the being sarcasm. <sighs> We can start now. Ermensoul access grid. Initiating connection procedure. Is this a small sapling? Ugh! Darn it! Come on, let's catch up with him! It's different than what I imagined. Ooh, Paimon's never seen anything like this. And it feels like a sacred place. Ermin's soul is closely intertwined with the entirety of Tavat. Every bit of information flowing here means something. Pick your jaws up off the floor. It's time to go. Why is it that Paimon just wants to do the opposite of everything he says? <sighs> Lesser Lord Kusanali, we will now proceed to the heart of Ermensoul. Can you still sense where the heart of Ermensoul is? Yes. Permission to begin searching for information there? Permission granted. Go ahead. Let's go. 
Stay close. Don't go running off. Hey, so... Say we did go running off in here. What would happen? <laughs> what, what are you smirking at? I was just imagining the look on your travel companion's face if you went and got lost. Anything's possible in here. You can't rule anything out. So if you want to stay safe, your best option is to stick close to me. have spread out. Those are all packets of information from inside Ermansol. Be careful not to touch them. Oh. Fish chains. It looks the same in every direction. about getting lost. Huh. What do you know? He was actually telling the truth. <sighs> is he mocking me again? Uh, what is it this time? There's a time and a place to lie, but this definitely isn't it. So why don't you relax your guard a little? We're here. We were seeing this tree. What are you talking about? This is the center of Fermi, so all the information in the world is flowing through it. Lesser Lord Kusanali. Good, you made it. Are you ready? Ready when you are. Then please begin. Preparing to access cognitive currents. Establishing waypoint. The Balladeer is actually doing what Nahida tells him. Guess he must want to stay alive. He hasn't put up any resistance, and he seems good at working on the front line. Maybe he had a similar role in Fatui. First, Akame saw other stories. Now, this was a strange individual. The rest is up to you. If you discover anything at all, make sure to share it with us. Will do. Huh. For once, we're the ones with nothing to do. Traveler, Paimon, would you like to talk? Nahime, is this a best conversation? Yes, I've also invited Paimon to join. I? What the? We can talk to each other inside our heads? Well, this is the first time she did that with Paimon. I'm guessing that you don't want us to disturb the Baladir. <laughs> That's part of it. Plus, we're all friends. There's nothing wrong with us talking like this once in a while. Paimon's never tried this before. This is great! So, Paimon's been wanting to ask you something. Don't you think the Balladeer's a bit of a walking contradiction? He's always talking back, but he seems to listen to what you say. Yes, and he seems to excel at doing odd jobs for others. As I've told you before, there are still some mysteries for him to resolve. Things that are clear as day to me, but that he has yet to understand. Perhaps today will be the day that he finds some answers. Mm, is it about his past, the betrayals, and the other events in Azuma? Well done. Smart and attentive as always. Actually, I caught a glimpse of a few things when I ran into Hypasia at Party's DI. I relate what you saw in the blood of his mind. So, you made contact with that part of his mind. Well, it's true. Betrayal turned the Paladir into the person he is today. Huh. Paimon thought nothing could get under that guy's skin. Turns out, he can get hurt and angry just like anyone else. 
we were talking telepathically, would you be able to pass images from your mind to others? Like the memory he had? Everyone has a history, Paimon. Even if you're a puppet created by the Electro Archon. Speaking of puppets, we ran into two people at the Academia today talking about an essay. Turns out their topic was about the Tatara Suna incident. Nahida, do you know anything about that? If you mean the mysterious events, the Kabuki Mono and so on, mm -hmm. yes. I know about all of that. Really? Because from what they were saying, it sounded like lots of Tatara Suna's history is still unexplained. And most of the information we have now is just from people filling the gaps with their imagination. At least that's what they thought. Oh? How interesting. Those two managed to deduce quite a lot through guesswork alone. So the guessing got it right? Well, they guessed right about one thing. Tatara Suna was sabotaged. Must be a riveting conversation you three are having. Funny how all the good ones happen when I'm not involved. Ah, uh, what makes you think we're talking to each other? <laughs> Don't insult me. You're having a private conversation without me. Obviously, I must be the topic of said conversation. We have every right to keep certain things confidential. Of course you do. You can't have your prisoner knowing too much. So, uh, have you found anything yet? Still looking. Don't get your hopes up, though. You and your twin come from outside this world. It wouldn't surprise me if there was nothing on either of you in Ermansoul at all. Wait, how did you know about that? Did the Hida tell you? Can I list the things I did since the beginning of my journey here? You recorded. It's not like we've never met before. And anyway, you're world famous. It'd be more surprising if I didn't know a few things about you. Every conversation with you is hard work. But our attitude's better than our thoughts. Right now, we have to keep the peace. I'm not interested in creating more misery for myself. And making cordial conversation is something I can manage. Huh? Wait. This light, it looks similar to those saplings. What could it be? Anonymous data. Hey, don't you forget the agreement. You have to share it with us. Shh, just wait. Mr. Niwa, are you certain this is worth the risk? We are talking about Tatara Suna's furnace after all. It may not pay to act rashly. There's no one else who can enter the furnace. It has to be me. Is that so? <sighs> well, since you insist. <gasps> it's... The name Niwa... Oh, so we, we were seeing that one. Niwa was the main in charge of the Tarasuna. Plus, he belongs to the lineage of Ishinormus. There was a word transition. I have been in Tatara Suna for some time now. You have shown me great hospitality, as has Mikoshi Nagamasa, and indeed, everyone else. Under your leadership, Tatara Suna is a warm, welcoming place, like a giant village. People are gainfully employed, their lives have purpose, they are motivated. As I understand, the Raiden Shogun has, in recent years, eliminated much of the evil that plagued Inazuma. As for Tatara Suna, it was originally established as a means of safely disposing Crystal Marrow. The forging industry with Crystal Marrow as a raw material has since flourished, giving rise to generations of swordsmiths. Some world-renowned, others unknown. All passing on their legacy. Skills, blood, dreams. Every smith brought into this trade looks to find their purpose between steel and blade. That is why you accepted the proposal brought to you by myself and Akame. 
Yes, well, were it not for you coming to Inazuma and happening to make Akame's acquaintance, the two of you never would have joined forces. And he would be the first to admit that there's no way he could have revolutionized our forging process like this on his own. At least not on the same timescale. You allowed Akame to take all the credit for a method that you jointly developed. He sold it to me. And now, every piece of ore here is smelted using the new technique. Even now, you remain one of Tatarasuna's key consultants, working right here alongside us. I believe it is you, sir, who are truly responsible for the changes in our manufacturing and forging methods. <laughs> you flatter me. From the outset, I saw much that was commendable in the forging industry of Inazuma. And it has been my great honor to befriend you all. So you say, Escher. But is this really the truth? My good sir, what do you mean? I tried to resist thinking it was all connected. Because I didn't want to speculate. And I didn't want to believe that things could turn out this way. What have we gained from adopting your new technology? Ominous black smoke? Mounting production problems? Worker fatigue and casualties are up and continuing to rise at an alarming rate. And recently, as you well know, someone died because of that strange filth inside the furnace. We've kept the truth from spreading outside, but still, I suspect you understand it better than I do. None of the people who went out to get help have come back. Now, our mutual friend, the Kabuki Mono, is taking the Golden Feather to Narukami Island to seek an audience with Shogun. This is our last hope. But that doesn't phase you, does it, Escher? Nothing does. Otherwise, why would you still be standing there with that smile on your face? <sighs> I'm just surprised that you finally chose to be so sincere. I'm sure you've been harboring these suspicions for quite some time. <sighs> Mikoshi Nagamasa may have noticed that there was one common denominator among all these events. Namely you, Escher. But Mr. Mikoshi is more cautious than I. He does things by the book. After all, Nagamasa is the adopted son of Mikoshi Torichio, the yokai struck down by the Shogun's own hand. If he truly seeks to redeem his family's honor, an abundance of caution is well advised. You're well informed on the subtleties of his situation for a mechanic all the way from Fontaine. Are you sure you're not a little overqualified? Why, Mr. Niwa, are you suggesting I find a job as a diplomat? Sadly, I am so very attached to my craft. Enough, Escher. I'm here because an evil force is raging inside the furnace. And someone needs to take your new device inside the high-risk zone so we can absorb it and put an end to the problem. Mm. I'm in charge here. And I'm about to take some responsibility and head inside. Probably to my death. But what about you? What are you still doing here? Judging from the look in your eyes, you don't seem to trust me. Drop the act! We're past that now. Whoever you are, it looks like your plan to destroy Tatara Suna has worked. I just want to know what you're still doing here. What's left? Don't you have all your answers by now? Honestly, I'm just waiting for the right moment. A moment like this. Where you finish talking and I stop you from entering the furnace. <sighs> you... You... <sighs> You're a little smarter than I initially gave you credit for. I thought I'd disguise myself exceptionally well. At least for the first few days. But to my surprise, you had your people look into my background right from the start. It's a long journey from Inazuma to Fontaine, but that didn't stop them. 
Eventually, they managed to confirm that Escher was an alias, and that I was not from Fontaine at all. And yet, despite all of that, you still fail to realize my true identity, and what I seek in Tatarasuna. Did you really think you would be able to see through my plan? <clears throat> if you kill me, there's no one who can get inside the furnace. So you're really going to destroy this place? Is that it? Oh, but you're quite wrong. There is one other person. Mm, some may not see him as a person, but you told him yourself. You're not a puppet. You're a human. You're just missing a heart. <gasps> Whoever you're working for won't get away with this. They'll be found out. But... This makes no sense. What are you really trying to accomplish by all this? Why go to all this trouble? It's no trouble at all. Patience is a virtue which I have in abundance. This is all part of a carefully controlled experiment. If you must know, I'm happy to divulge my true identity. I'm a Fatui Harbinger. Call me... The Doctor. The... Fatui? Who... What do you want? Just to create a... Minor inconvenience for your nation. That's it? That's why you... Gave us your cursed technology? Just to let loose the evil energy from the Crystal Marrow? <laughs> Look how even the righteous soul is filled with venom when faced with its demise. My device functions precisely as you say. It is the only chance you have of preventing a catastrophe and keeping the truth from the outside world. However, I did not make it with you in mind. It is easier for a person to be possessed by evil spirits when they are filled with hate. So give in to your fury. I want to see what happens when a malevolent heart is placed into an unsuspecting puppet. Make no mistake, even without you, that pure, innocent puppet would only end up being used by someone else instead. What other reason would a human have for befriending one who is not of our kind? <coughs> if you give him my heart... Tell him that both Nagamasa and I see him as one of us. He has nothing to prove to anyone. Because not everyone just wants to use other people. The only ones who think like that. People like you. What a beautiful way to see the world. It almost makes me feel a little guilty. Hmm. Then out of respect for you, I shall redefine myself. Think of me as a monster or a demon, if you wish. At least this way your death is not a consequence of your own folly turning you into an easy target. You simply lost to something more powerful than you could ever hope to defeat. I say, Mr. Niwa, let's see what happens. Will your puppet friend become a human? No, that will prove quite impossible. Mr. Niwa? Already dead. What a pity. <sighs> Jester, I have completed the task you gave me. Creating a gap and infiltrating Inazuma's inner workings. <laughs> what fun it was. Jester.
But, but this was 400 years ago. I get it that he can travel through time or something, but he was already. I'd like to introduce a puppet to you. If he proves useful, let's make him our newest comrade. And if not, let's turn him to dust. Are you all right? Dottore. <laughs> Dottore. <laughs> Good. Good. Was that the doctor? Did he turn into a mechanic from Fontaine? I'm afraid so. He was behind. Oh, but why do we see things from his perspective? When I touched the doctor to confirm whether he'd eliminated all his segments, I read this memory in his mind. You have to admit, it must be the truth. Maybe so, but it means nothing. Does it? But this memory shows that Niwa didn't betray you. He never meant for you to be the one to take the device into the furnace. You know very well what that means. Even more so than I. <sighs> this betrayal was a lie that he has believed for hundreds of years. Was this part of the doctor's experiment? When the betrayal never happened, it existed only in his imagination. Where does this leave him? Give him some space. He looks really mad. Paimon doesn't want to be anywhere near him right now. Okay, let's go over there. We need to give him some time to process his emotions. Paimon's still confused about the Tatarasuna incident. So, the doctor was behind it, but why has that gotten him so worked up? Nobody has ever deceived you like that, Paimon. It's natural that you find it difficult to understand. Perhaps he needed to learn this someday. So now you have the complete picture. Katsuragi took the Kabuki Mono to live with the people of Tatarasuna. Later, the doctor showed up disguised as a mechanic from Fontaine. And that's when the trouble began. It was all a horrific experiment planned by the doctor. Everything he did was just to plant seeds of disaster in Inazuma that would bear fruit in the future. Of all the unwitting participants in the doctor's experiment, the balladeer became the main test subject. After the events you just saw in that memory, the doctor put Niwa's heart into the device and handed it to the balladeer. Then, he instructed him to enter the furnace and absorb all the filth caused by the smelting process. The load was far beyond what he expected, but the balladeer survived. He left the furnace in sheer exhaustion and said to the mechanic, This device seems to have protected me. What's in it? The mechanic answered, Niwa fled this place for fear of punishment, but he left you a gift. He said it's the one thing that you've been looking for. He took it straight from the chest of one of his innocent servants. The mechanic removed the withered heart from the device as he spoke. The balladeer was stunned that such unthinkable cruelty had brought him the thing he'd been longing for his entire life. A heart acquired through cold-blooded murder is a cursed thing. But it has protected him from the filth. He thought Niwa had completely betrayed him, and yet this very betrayal had ensured his survival. Overwhelmed with anger and sorrow, the balladeer threw the heart to the ground and left Tatarasuna without looking back. Holy moly! So the doctor killed an innocent man and pinned everything on the victim? That's terrible! Being betrayed by Ben and Ben's friend, Church caused great resentment. 
Now I know what was behind his decision to take revenge on the Red and Gokai than a hundred years ago. But it doesn't mean that Visions was the right decision. Yes. Only if he understands this can he choose a new path forward. I don't remember what he did a hundred years ago. Tatori, you brazen face! <clears throat> Niwa didn't run from justice. You killed him! A while later. Shall we see how he's doing? Hey, you all right? <laughs> That's a scary expression. Are you worried about me? If we didn't have such a history, I'd almost think that qualifies me to be your friend. Uh, we just want to make sure this is not part of the plan. It won't. I'll keep my end of the deal. Hmm. Hey, are you investigating the stuff we want to know about? That's why we're here. But unfortunately, there's no information about the Descenders in Ermansoul. Even if you can't find anything, that seems to confirm it. Ermansoul does not keep records on the Descenders. Uh -huh. Anyone who comes from beyond this world is not counted as part of Tavat. Okay, I thought it was because they weren't here before, but we just aren't too far. Oh. Does that mean we have to leave empty handed? No, we've got a bullet there with us. No, no, it's better with still. Thank you. Don't thank me just yet. Hmm, you look really upset. <laughs> well, since Ermin's soul was a dead end. I guess I can share some other info that might interest you. Huh? About what? The reason why there are records about your sister and Ermansoul. It might have something to do with Conria. Apparently, Conria was her first destination when she arrived in this world. Plus, she only came to this world because the heavens responded to the summoning. Mm -hmm. The heavens responded? The Jester told me this himself. You can take his word on this. He was a royal mage in Conria, and lived with your sister for a time. Uh, Jester, not a foot to him. And he's still alive as well? I don't know the details. It's up to you whether you want to believe me. All I can say is, I wouldn't lie to you about this. Did you get all that, Lesser Lord Kusanali? Yes. Astonishing news. Does this info count towards my mission? It wasn't for Mermansoul, but was it valuable? Very valuable. Good. In that case, I'll take some time for myself now. Huh? What have you done? Lesser Lord Kusanali was right. My power's all but completely spent. Even if I use all of the divine power left in me, I can't sustain this shield for very long. I shared a secret with you, and now you owe me. So in return, I'd like you to answer a question for me. Why do you want to know? Give me your hand. Can you hear my voice inside your head? I was trying to brainwash me. No, I can't do anything like that anymore. At most, all I can do is exchange a few words with you. So tell me, in this world, is it possible to change the past? Wait, what was that? Done. Huh? What the? What happened? I not only saw you hold hands for a second! Wow, we talked about that for a single second. Nothing. I was just thanking him for helping me. Wait, the, the, did he seem me hesitate? 
But that was because I know about Crazy Radio Lord who could evolve them. Wait, but we didn't change the past. It, it doesn't... What does it actually have to do? I so think, long. What? Come on! I suggest you get yourselves out of here quickly. I didn't read. What was that? Stop. Fast reaction time, but I don't think we'll be seeing each other again. From this day forth, the names Balladeer and Kabuki Mono will cease to exist. They... Changing the logs doesn't really change the past. Did we? Oh well. Mm. Yeah, it af kind of affected how everybody perceived Greater Lord Vokodavata. Those who died in Tatarasuna because of me deserve another chance at life. Hmm. Hey! Balladeer! Don't do anything stupid! Hmm, that's a nice situation you right know, there. I never did like insects. Hordes of the puny things swarming together can be a real nuisance. And I enjoy nothing more than to stamp them out like the pests they are. But if a colony of harmless ants isn't threatening anyone, I guess they deserve to be left alone. Luckily, everything can be set right. It's time to solve this once and for all. Uh-oh, he disappeared! Come on, we gotta find him somehow! Hmm... Was... I don't think Nahida would stop him, but in the... in that... bubble serve kind of a protection for her to not learn about Ruka de Vata. But he wouldn't know that. It was just convenient. Oh no, he's really gone. Oh, can you hear me? Nahida! Traveler, Paimon, Paladir, what happened just now? I was suddenly cut off by some kind of power. It was the Balladeer's fault! He... he shut you out! You don't know he did everything that happened? I didn't think he'd be capable of something like that with so little power left. Did he keep some of his power hidden when he was defeated? Or... Did he achieve something beyond his abilities, and it took everything he had? Where the heck did he go? It's all our fault. We were supposed to keep an eye on him. Sorry, Nahida. Don't be. It's not your fault. Please, let me handle this from here. Even though I'm not sure I can solve it. We're running out of time. Follow my lead and get out of Ermansoul as soon as possible. I should have come along. You wouldn't have been bad. For her to come along. We're out, and we're at uh, an inn or something. This is an emergency. I'll have to ask you to stay here for now. Everything's arranged, and nobody will disturb you. No, chop you. I'm sorry, but this isn't something I need your help with. Leave this one to me. An emergency? How bad is it? Nahida, will you be okay? Don't worry. If my assessment is correct, though there may be some minor disturbances, it won't lead to a disaster. Please rest and recover your strength here until I say it's safe. Her voice is gone. 
Paimon can't shake the feeling that something really big has happened. What do you think the Balladeer meant? And why did he suddenly grab onto you before? Paimon doesn't remember where your lava could have happened, and the Balladeer's question was a strange one. It's hard to explain in full, and the truth might be very distressing for Paimon. Let's get the part about where you learn about the bat for now and focus on the Balladeer. Let's help Paimon what Balladeer is you and why he might be playing. He wants to change the past? But surely that's impossible! It's not easy, that's for sure. Right! You can't just rewrite history! All that stuff happened already in real life! Mm, well, I should know about the great Sakura tree that wasn't there and then it was. It's like, um, imagine Paimon drank all the water in this inn. Even if no one was there to see it, Paimon would sure as heck remember drinking it. Pretty simple. Hmm. So, why does Paimon still have a bad feeling about this? Paimon can't help but feel scared about what he might do. Maybe he wants to erase himself from history. But if he erases himself from history, wouldn't that make him not part of history to erase himself and be a paradox? Are you okay? Sorry, Paimon accidentally. Oh. It's the Balladeer's fault for causing Paimon all this mental stress. But erasing yourself from history? Is that really possible in Ermansoul? Not necessarily, but maybe. Uh-oh. Paimon's head is overheating from trying to understand what he's up to. And it's still not working. <laughs> Paimon's had it with that little brat. He's been nothing but trouble ever since we met him. There's no way he'll actually succeed, right? Otherwise... Won't everyone who's connected to him be affected too? Mm -hmm. Indeed, if the Balladeer does erase himself from Hermeso, many people in Azum will be affected. I can't imagine what the situation will look like. Worst case scenario, it will affect everyone with a connection to the rating of Kazuha, Kazuha, Ayaka, Ayato. Will this mean that they will disappear? No, it won't disappear necessarily. Depends on path people There's say nothing so. we can do about it at this point. Hey, have you got any ideas on what we should do next? Seems like now there's nothing left for us to do but to go to sleep. But Paimon's still so worried. Paimon won't be able to sleep a wink tonight. Me neither. So, how about uh, we list all our favorite foods to take our mind off things? Let's go. Heck, if that doesn't work, Paimon's probably going to collapse of anxiety here. All right, Paimon will start. First dish. Hmm. Munstack grilled fish. Oh, and chicken mushroom skewers. Tea break pancakes, cream stew, sautéed matsutake, and drayun chili chicken, almond tofu, satisfying salad. Oh, oh, also, Adeptus Temptation, Golden Shrimp Balls, Triple Layered Consomme, Lotus Seed and Bird Egg Soup, and... and... It's looking weird. Um... Um... Hmm? Uh, hmm. I don't know what's wrong. Getting so worried about the situation with the Balladeer. Hmm? The Balladeer? Is, is that a food too? Huh. Weird name though. I thought maybe she would remember since she was in Ermison when he started. If I doesn't remember the Balladeer, that must mean he actually put it off. Well, how did he have that ability? This doesn't make sense. What's wrong? 
Your eyes are like saucers. Was it something Paimon said? No, it's nothing. So, the Balladeer. Is that someone's name? Cause it sounds like a nickname or something. Uh, is this really happening? I need to know what else has changed. Paimon, come hmm? with me. Okay, sure. Where are we going? I want to go back to Inazuma. Should we talk to Nahida first? And I think she, he could explain to her who was the bloody. Huh? Fine by Paimon, but is everything okay? You're acting like this is an emergency. That's not the time to explain. We're just gonna travel to another continent and there's no time to explain. Let's go over there first. Well, I suppose the teleports are canon, so... Let me just check here. It's not hidden up here. <laughs> well, the weekly boss is mostly a fight in his memory, so... You gotta practice it again. Can I come here? No, never did try. Uh, let me see, does this say something? Uh, okay. sure first memories, yeah. It, he gets physical stuff in there, but it's part of his memories. So now we will probably win there too. Virtual rescue him. Let me just send Add people Astro. to work. They probably got three. Ten minutes ago or so. Why here? Why here? Shall we see the shogun? Ah, it's been a while. Pardon me, I'd like to ask a question if I may. Of course, go ahead. About the writing of Kanin. Could you tell me that story one more time? No. <laughs> now there's a question I wasn't expecting. <sighs> Very well. I'll tell you what I know once more. The once renowned Raiden Gokuden, comprised of five branches Aminoma, Futsu, Ishin, Hyakume, and Senju. Okay, I don't really remember. The art of forging practiced by these five clans was first taught to them personally by the almighty Shogun. Over time, the five branches diverged from one another as generations of bladesmiths honed and perfected their craft until they became five distinct traditions. Most of the great swordsmith clans of old have since fallen into decline, and for a long time, only the Amenoma branch kept its heart alive. But fortunately, Kaede Harakazuha recently returned to Inazuma and took up the mantle of the Ishin art. Now, Two clans remain of the original Gokuden Five. If my memory serves me right, you yourself were present when he forged the Ishin blade. Oh yeah, we were! Paimon remembers the 
remembers that now. No, she usually has identical memory. We learned a bit about the decline of the Raiden Gokuden then too. It seems like such a shame. What was the reason behind their decline? <sighs> that, my friends, is a tragic tale indeed. In fact, this was not made known to me for most of my life. All these years, I knew of those great clans' demise, but never the cause. <sighs> Only recently, when the question was on my mind, did I ask Kaedehara Kazuha about this. He told me that, as we are both heirs to a branch of the Raiden Gokunin, it was right that I should know the truth. There is no harm in telling you, but I must warn you. It is a dark and sorrowful tale. The Raiden Gokuden were the targets of a murderous rampage by a vengeful bladesmith. Vengeful? Why? Four hundred years ago, so I'm told, there was a catastrophic malfunction in Tatarasuna's furnace. One brave swordsmith heard the commotion and chose not to flee, but he rushed to the scene, hoping to prevent a disaster. Hmm. Tatarasuna was home to a state-of-the-art forging and smelting operation in that day, and overseeing it was the armory officer. His surname was Niwa, though he had family ties to the Kaedehara clan. Knowing that they had just one chance to save countless lives, Mr. Niwa and the swordsmith leaped together into the furnace. The furnace quickly stabilized, but neither of them made it out. The smith's death, though heroic, dealt a devastating blow to his family's fortunes. His orphan son was left to fend for himself and grew up deeply resentful at the world. In his heart, the whole of Inazuma was culpable in his tragedy. He hated the almighty Shogun for her apparent indifference towards his father's death, and he hated everyone who had done nothing to try and save him. Powerless and destitute, the only legacy he had to pass on to his children was his hatred. Generation after generation bore this grudge, living in utter misery. Alas, if only the story could have ended there. But 100 years ago, the then head of this family reached the end of his wits. He could bear their fate no longer, and yet he could do nothing to change it. Finally, he made a drastic decision to take revenge on the ride in Gokuden. In doing so, he sought to vent his pet up anger and shake the very foundations of Inazuma's forging industry. In his fury, he murdered indiscriminately, killing even bladesmiths from the Hyakume clan which he belonged to. His goal was absolute, the devastation of all of the Raiden Gokuden. Okay, I don't really remember what was the original story. But when he came to the Kaedehara and Kamisato clans, his killing spree came to an abrupt end. He failed to catch them unawares. They fought back fiercely, and they did not spare his life. That is why the Kaedehara clan and their Ishin art survived that day. I suppose they were the lucky ones, under the dire circumstances. The legend of the Riding Bucket then has changed. Someone else attacked the swordsmiths. Looks like the Balatir did something in Kermiso, but it seems Neo still died. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? I have seen Kazuha recently. Kazuha? Why, yes. Just yesterday, in fact. We spoke for a while over some tea. He seemed well. Yeah, so he still exists. And of course he exists. The guy just mentioned him. And we were alongside when he was forging. And he's the same Kazuha I know. Things don't seem as bad as I feared last night. That's all. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Don't tell Paimon. There are other places.
says you want to visit too, right? <laughs> Your expression says it all. You can't hide anything from Paimon. Mm. On to the next stop. Lead the way, traveler. Paimon will be right behind you. We should check the Shogun and Miko. Miko painted the. Okay, okay. Uh, what's the name? I think the nose is too. To the Balladeer to save us. So what happened that day? Hey, and there's a number or a new artisan We're here. A number um, missing? This is the Yashiro Commission's headquarters, so Or there's a Harbinger less, or there's a new Harbinger place. It's been a while. Hello. If you're looking for the Commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I'm afraid your timing is unfortunate. They're not here right now. Are they out on business? Yeah, couldn't we just ask Paimon? Do you know this person? Do you know this person? How were they? Okay, so we know. The Commissioner is out on business, and Miss Kamisato is standing in for some meetings in the Commissioner's place. If it's urgent, you're welcome to wait inside until they get back. What do you think? Shall we go in? Thank you. We'll take you up on that offer. Can we take a walk in the courtyard? If it were anyone else, I couldn't allow it. But seeing as you're so close with the Commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I think it should be okay. Well, how is there? We'll be heading in then. Thanks! Yeah, we could just talk to Toma. He probably will know this story as well. Hmm? Hello, dears. Is there something you want to say? Uh, Ma'am, can I ask you a couple of questions? <laughs> of course, Traveler. Yes, I know who you are. Miss Kamisato has told me about you. What would you like to know? How are the Commissioner and Miss Kamisato these days? Oh, they're both very well indeed. Lately, Miss Kamisato has been rather busy attending all kinds of meetings and occasionally paying visits to some local organizations on the Commissioner's behalf. As for the Commissioner himself, well, you know. Busy as ever, that much hasn't changed. Although, he does seem to be in a rather good mood these days. So pretty much business as usual in the Yashiro Commission, huh? Very much so. Ayato is still the Yashiro Commissioner. Ayaka is still the leader of the house. No changes there. Paimo will know this stuff. As far as I can see, nothing's changed in the Yashiro Commission either. I was expecting as much, but it's still a big relief to know that the Kamisato siblings are both safe and well. Well, got any more questions? That's all for now. You're Many very welcome. In fact, I would love nothing more than for you to come and visit more often. But I'm sure you must be far too busy to have time for that. Miss Kamisato talks about you all the time. She seems so thrilled to have you as a friend. And she's always saying how talented you are and how much she admires you. I must say, many things in Inazuma seem to have taken a turn for the better since you arrived here. So you're not just Miss Kamisato's knight in shining armor, you know. You're a hero to us all. I'm flattered. I mean it. Whenever the commissioner dines at home, Toma always joins him. I always find myself at my most relaxed when I'm serving the two of them and listening to them chat away. The commissioner has such a busy schedule that he doesn't always have the chance to take his meals at home. But given the opportunity, he always prefers to dine here. 
they say it's because Toma is a much better chef than most. <laughs> oh, the commissioner is so fond of home comforts. They get to talking about you sometimes, too, you know. Always with a very fond tone. The way one would talk about dear old friends around whom one can truly be themselves. Miss Kamisato occasionally joins them as well. Whenever the whole family gets together and they start talking about people they've met and experiences they've had, you always get a mention. It should talk in slow. It's been many years now since the late Mr. and Mrs. Kamisato passed away. Much has happened in the Kamisato clan in that time. As someone who is old and gray enough to have watched their son and daughter grow up, it makes me so happy to see them meet a dependable friend whose company they enjoy so much. So, in the future, if you ever do have the time, please know you are always very welcome at the Yashiro Commission Headquarters. There will always be at least one old lady who would be delighted to have the pleasure of your company. Thank you very much, oh, Mr. Gang. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Haima likes it here too. Also, you were saying something about the food here being really great. Paimon's itching to try it. We may just have to invite ourselves around for dinner sometime. Uh, uh, Paimon meant we should come pay a visit again real soon. Ideally around dinner time. <laughs> of course. You're always welcome. All right, goodbye for now. We're, uh... Where are we going next? Arizona. Come on, you're Great. playing the Shogun. Bye, ma'am. Don't worry, we'll see ourselves out. All right, then. Take care now. Hope to see you soon. Oh, are you two leaving More already? People. Yep, everything's taken care of now. Don't worry. Very well. Safe travels. Goodbye. Hey, that was so spy. Is there anybody should talk to the Tarzuna? That guy told us already that there was an instant shear and you were died. Something or someone? Do my eyes deceive me, or is that the traveler and Paimon? There you go, got out of here. Xavier, what are you doing here? I was in the general area, and now I'm in this specific area. There, that's me. So, what about you two? We have some questions and thought you might be able to help. Do you know much about the person? Certainly do. I've researched the furnace here in some depth. If there's anything you want to know, just ask away. Oh, uh, do you understand the history of this area? Like the back of my hand? <laughs> Make no mistake, I have been here a good many times before. Not only that, but I've met people in Inazuma whose families used to live in Tatarasuna years ago. They said it's all true, the history here. Oh, I'm listening. Hmm? Oh, well, uh, it's a long story, don't you know? The tale of Tatarasuna starts a long time ago. I'm told that its history is one of the most foremost forging and smelting operations in the nation goes back around a thousand years. Still, the furnace has had a couple of serious maintenance issues along the way. A couple? When exactly? One was just in the last few years, the other was several hundred years ago. A fun fact, I'm not the first Fontaine tech guy to come and work on it either. There was a guy back then too. 
They say he was a mechanic who consulted on a technology upgrade. Seems like the technological collaboration between our two nations goes back a long way. How about that? Mechanic, huh? It was like the doctors to sabotage the partners, leading to all the ensuing chaos. You know, obviously, that had nothing to do with the puppets to the point. Hey, weren't you gonna ask Xavier something about the Tarasuna? Come on, ask already! Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize you two were here for a history lesson. Me neither. Paimon doesn't know what's gotten into this one today. Feels like we've been preparing for a history exam or something. Hmm? What brought this on? Did you just wake up today with a sudden burning desire for historical knowledge? Pretty much. So, can I ask one more question? Sure! Go ahead. Have you ever heard of a kabuki mono connected to the Tarazuna? A kabuki mono? Hmm. No, I can't say that I have. I do know the word, Inazuman, for those eccentric types who always go around dressed to the nines. Just the sort of person that I'd like to meet, actually. Pretty much anybody with a vision. But sadly, I've never had the pleasure, nor have I come across anything to do with a kabuki mono where Tatara Suna is concerned. So there's no more kabuki mono. Did Baladi really manage to erase himself from history completely? We should ask the person who built him. First of all, if so, he must have wanted to change the world and revert everything back to the way it was. But so far, it looks like the majority of changes have only affected himself. Thank you, Xavier. Of course! Don't mention it. Oh, we're leaving? Okay, bye, Xavier! She said... Xavier? I don't, I don't think I ever heard anybody saying this word that wasn't Xavier in X-Men. So... I don't know. In English. English. Oh, you're most welcome. More than happy to help. I don't know if Xavier, like she said, is my maybe more French. Farewell. Looks like you got all the information you're looking for. Uh, I think go back. <laughs> it's still a little puzzle. Why sure, do see the person who built the puppets? Whatever it is, it seems like it's really troubling you. Keep your smile, Spinal Crocodile. No matter what happens, Paimon will always be there for you. Thank you, Paimon. Hey, don't mention it. <laughs> All right, let's head off and go meet Nahida. This seems more like we can get the actor in this episode than just. Go there, talk to her. Is the Red and Shogun now her first and only puppet? Hey, it's them. Oh. Oh, I'm not reading all that again. It's pr it probably changed. Akaba, Sawada, you're still here? Mm, are you still talking about the Issei? Indeed we are. If you have a moment, we'd love for you to join us once more. We have time. What do you want to talk to us about? It's the same topic we discussed last time. Obviously. Still looking for more info about Tatara Suna, huh? Hmm. Should we join them? Do I have an option? Perfect. These two have researched Tatara Suna's past. Let's hear what they have to say. Yeah, or we could have come to them in the first place since you were already in Sumeru City. Unfortunately, we haven't made any real progress. <sighs> the article didn't let me read last time. It was great. Can I read it again? Huh? Oh, uh, of course. Okay, I'm strange. She didn't start it. Uh, paper, time to analyze. Seven photo from the grid. Production, body. Okay, seems like I think there were three or four entries here. Maybe everything is the same here. I'm not reading everything again. Obviously, they removed the parts that were mentioned. 
Uh, the picture. I didn't quite get why didn't Zumo attack uh, Miyazaki? Oh, no, not Miyazaki. Katsuragi. Hey, I didn't get that. Why did Nozumo? Nozumo is the inspector? Yeah, I guess it was. Why did he attack Katsuragi? Yeah, I don't think that. Ah, okay, great. But the, the word line is missing there. Uh, a great many of these rumors revolve around the yokai, who are also very curious of some folk stars. A small portion, however, part repeatedly mentions the word outsider. It should be known that the appearance of such a character, who is suspected to be based on a real person, is a very curious case. In fact, this fact drew the attention of the researchers to dwell further, and eventually the following piece of information came to light. A foreign mechanic once visited Tarazuna. And this wasn't even mentioned before. Uh, even so, this would probably be regular history that they should have uncovered before. Reportedly, the reason for the, his immigration was to exchange knowledge and forge ties with the locals. However, the mechanics seem to behave suspiciously, often wandering around his ancient or restricted areas. Then if someone tried to turn him away, they would only earn incomprehensible mumbles from his lips. The mechanic often sh stared into the furnace, seemingly to check its condition. And suddenly, his, he also spent a substantial amount of time watching the local residents. Judging from the era, it was not uncommon to see cross-cultural exchanges of technical knowledge in places such as Tarzuna. After traveling across the tides, foreign experts being welcomed into the region was likely not unreasonable either. Yet, calamity came not long after this exchange of knowledge, which hints at a high potential for causation between these events. However, some current residents believe that these assumptions were merely the results of their forbearance over overactive imaginations, attempting to theorize how things actually unfolded. Uh, and people here... And the mechanic. Long have I dwelled through many texts and documents, but I was ultimately unable to decipher even a specter of a clue as to his background. I still mentions of the mechanic grew scarcer in the aftermath of the Tadazuna incident. I speculate that instead of the mechanic possibly being a figure woven from overripe imaginations, he actually did exist, and perhaps even had a hand in the events that took place in Tadazuna. I presume mm. you'll want to read mine as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. Miyazaki hit his green. Oh, hearing this, uh, sorry, I will not be free. You will release the lizard from his head into Katsurak's palm. But just as more words were to be exchanged, someone came walking nearby. Their footsteps, steady and confident, the head that appeared by the door was that of one from abroad. The newcomer placed some lunch boxes to one side, nodded, and made the two leave. That's what I call out after him. Sir, what about your meal? Are you done hungry? The man smiled upon him in Katsurak's world. I already ate. I hope that you, my lord, may also find time to save your hunger soon. You are our guest, sir. To see you helping these trifling matters fills me with embarrassment. You will say it with sincerity. The man smiled as if it was no matter. Then, with a nod, he departed. Um, what was here? This form of darkness. Oh, no, it, it, here is also saying stranger for a mechanic. So there's the Polish, Kabuki Monon. This was well, kind of the same thing that happened to uh, Kabuki Monon. 
like a falling spear, the black cloud reached the bottom of the boat. There was joy in its perfectness of direction. Uh, like a charging beast, they plunged into the shoreline. Scant steps away, the mechanic left slowly approaching the grand wreck. Not but half an arm was left of the one who had cried out for help. With a plop, it landed at the mechanic's feet, who crossed, crossed to better study the object, straining against the urge to take a bite. Yet he did not, for the dark cloud swirling down had already picked the remnants of the ship clean. Uh, yeah, let me return. Okay, this is before he get being attacked by. Uh, then a second ship was sent, followed by a third, by a fourth. Each who left to seek salvation did so under false skies and bleak fortunes. Reason dictated that they should not have risked anyone else. The situation in the zone was severe. They needed to get a friend. That, that is the same as before, I guess. So you want to just bring him since he's returned to him. So was bought a winch away for falling the furnace. So you know, one of the mass of the party. Oh yeah, he was kind of fling, vanishing here. Look back into one if you want to go to the next stage. Worse than the suspicions, okay. Suddenly, a figure flashed by. The president did not go notice by Nanamasa. He drew his blade and, and cut, but in a flash, the evil spirit had shifted behind him, laughing directly. Seeking some more, my lord, knew it perhaps, and was a fair, and then addressed her new directly. I thought this was Scaramouche moving fast around him. Okay. Uh, the content has changed. Another effect of temporary of the information in your missile. The Vladir said he'd erased two of his names. If he already succeeded, he must have taken all of his might, but still. Well, what he do said you think? two of his names. A masterpiece. Hey, Traveler, remember how last time Akaba was saying how you wish you could gather more information about all this? Well, we just got back from Inazuma, so how about we tell them what we learned? Can yeah, only. How long have we been away? What did you find out? Something big? It's a long story. Basically, we have some friends in Inazuma, and... Those are the two writers that you learn about right now. Wow! Yeah. So many new details. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Well, well. So it all comes down to one man's desire for revenge. Huh. You heard this from a member of the Amanoma clan, you say? Then I guess it must be true. Shouldn't they have been part of your research? Ugh. So there's no ghost story here after all. This new information actually lends further credence to my hypothesis. Evidently, swordsmiths were seen as having an incredibly prestigious role in society those days, to the extent that harming them was conceived of, at least by the perpetrator, as a way of exacting revenge against those in power. Yes, yes, okay, point taken, you were right. But that doesn't mean I can't carry on with my novel. <laughs> and they're back at it. These guys are really into this. I got something to take care of. Oh, for now. I'm so sorry. Look at us, prattling on about our projects and ignoring you. <laughs> Thank you so <coughs> much for the information. Usually I get paid for that. You're welcome. See ya. Keep us in the loop if you find out anything else. Will do. <laughs> N 
you been? Ugh! Where to start? Paimon hasn't had a moment's rest this whole time. That night, we ended up chatting and chatting until suddenly, the sun was up. And then, he decided he wanted to go to Inazuma. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how does she remember our trip to Irmisu? I was investigating the situation with the Balladeer. The Balladeer? Hmm... This sounds like some kind of code name. I thought she fixed things up so he started to get too broken. Oh no. You look troubled. Is there something you need to tell me? We could tell them. Even Ahida doesn't remember. Just like last time, any change to Ermisol affects her as well. And Vladir acted quickly. He finished erasing himself before Nahida could stop him. I'm the only one who still remembers the things that were erased. Once again, I am the record keeper. Traveler? Hey, what's wrong? You look so upset. There are things that have happened that only I can remember. Uh, I have to tell you the truth. If I have heard you piece back together the story that was broken and scattered across time. Ruka Devata as well, or just Vladir? There was once there once was one named the Baladir created by the Electro Archon. He was a puppet who lived among men. After a series of events in Tatarazuna, the Baladir, thinking he had been twice thrice betrayed, left in Azuma to roam the world beyond. Uh, with no trust for humans and only loathing for the gods, he bore his grudge for years as he grew in strength, then returned to Inazuma to take his revenge. He tried in vain to become a deity with a gnosis and ended up losing everything. Yeah, now I'm curious, what, what happened when we were saving Nahida? Whoa. Did the sages try to make a god for themselves with something else? Who brought the the electro noses from Inazuma as well? Finally, he entered Irminson and learned the truth behind his betrayal. Knowing now that his entire life was built on lies, he did an unthinkable in an attempt to reverse his tragic fate. <sighs> That's quite a story. So, uh, this puppet known as the Balladeer erased himself from Erminsoul, hoping that he could change the past. But how was he even able to do that? As the Traveler said, he very nearly became Sumeru's deity. Admittedly, I remember it a little differently. I don't recall finding anyone inside the machine after we defeated it. Oh, okay, so there was a machine, an empty machine. Um... Nevertheless, it does make sense. If someone were to successfully erase themselves from Ermensoul, the world would change to reflect the new reality. So, you believe this person really existed, and we just don't remember him because... Well, because he literally changed the world? Yes. Theoretically speaking, it is possible to do this. But I'm struggling to imagine the kind of person who would dare go through with it. The Traveler comes from a world beyond to that. That's why there's no information about him in Ermensoul, and it also explains why any changes to Ermensoul wouldn't affect him. So if there's anyone in the world capable of retaining memories from a past that has been rewritten, it's you. It's quite incredible when you think about it. You can say that again. Paimon's having a hard time understanding this balladeer guy's motivations. Why did he do it? I can only make inferences based on the information we've been given. As for what kind of person he was, only you remember that. I'm really not sure. 
We were enemies after all. I don't know his perspective on all of this, so I can't say why he did something so extreme. Did he want to reset everything, or save someone, or did he want to completely undo his existence? Everything can be said right. It's time to solve this once and for all, maybe that's all there is to it. I still remember the question he asked. He asked me specifically and my hesitation gave him the answer. I hesitated because a witness with the Lord Rukadevata erased her all existence. But I can't tell Nahida that. To put it in another way, I know why the Baladir was so sure it could work, but I can't tell them that. Is something else worrying you? Is something that you can't share? <laughs> Just feel empty. He chose such a radical option, and yet... It couldn't change the fate of the ones who had died, right? Right. Once the Baladir realized he hadn't been betrayed after all, it must have completely changed his view of the people of Tatarasuna. Now he saw them as friends again. He couldn't keep hating humans after that. And if he thought there was a chance he could save his old friends, it would be hard not to try. The story makes sense. Every part of it. The Balladeer tried to achieve godhood with the doctor's help. He was unsuccessful, but retained the power to connect with Ermansoul. That power then enabled him to change what was recorded in Ermansoul and erase himself, even though he didn't have much strength left. Yeah, it does make sense, but it still ended in tragedy for his friends. It just feels so hopeless. He gave everything to do this, but... It seems like he got nothing in return. Yeah, he changed the world in many ways, and yet the dead still didn't get a second chance. Those fated to a tragic end could not be saved. What exactly did he want to fight back against? The betrayals in his life, or did he wish he never existed at all? Please wait a moment. I want to check something. Hmm. Found it. This should be the one. Mm -hmm. It turns out that I have a strange way of confirming everything he has told us. What is it? A record from a personal collection. It was tucked away in a corner. You should take a look. It's not connected to him, so. So present information is presented to you, it really resembles a fairy tale. Is this a fairy tale? Who wrote it? This matches everything I said. I authored this record myself. Huh? You wrote a fairy tale that somehow has something to do with the Balladeer? What was written in it? When combined with the Traveler's narrative, it's clear that this story is an allegory. Everything in it is a symbol for something else. Hmm. Hold on. So this record survived from... the... past past? Yes. Any information about the Balladeer or the Kabuki Mono and other records will have been changed. But I wrote this story in a way that means it was left intact. Hmm. I'm Changing the curious. information in Ermansoul oh. changes to that. But Ermansoul can't change information that was well hidden in advance. I guess I must have written this story as a backup before the Balladeer entered Ermansoul. Oh, interesting. That's incredible! What a great idea! And sending the Traveler into Ermansoul with the Balladeer must have been a further precaution. I knew he'd remember everything. Hmm. This story is abstract enough that it still resonates with the present information recorded in Ermansoul. But if we connect all the different pieces together, the true story that emerges is the one he told us. The now-erased life of the Balladeer. 
So you build a new one. There was once a lone monster draped in fox fur. The monster found a family of foxes, joined them, and they became friends. The monster lived with the family day and night, and everyone treated it as one of their own. Once in a while, the monster would take off its fox fur at night, and lament to itself as it gazed at its reflection in the water. I am a monstrosity, yet they are too foolish to see it. I pity them. But the monster soon found solace when another came to live among the foxes who was not their kin. A kitten, carved from the wood of a white tree who had been abandoned by the humans. The kitten too wished to become a fox, but its tail was too slender and it could not grow a coat of richly colored fur. Yet when the other foxes saw this, they spoke words of comfort to the kitten. Even without a tail and fur like ours, you are still one of us. Furious at this happy resolution, the monster lit a fire on the mountain. The terrified animals panicked as the fire spread. The only way to extinguish the flames was to make a sacrifice. A gray fox stood up and addressed the monster. It said, You are the cleverest among us. Surely you can help us find a way to solve this? The monster smiled, led the fox toward the fire, and murdered it. The gray fox's heart was turned into a beautiful drop of water, clear, spotless, and pure. The monster gave the heart of water to the kitten, telling him, The foxes have decided. You are the one who must be sacrificed. Take this, quench the flames, and die for your fox kin. The fire was extinguished, but the kitten lived. It left that side of the mountain and found a little bird who had a broken wing. The two promised they would spend their whole lives together, but the little bird did not have long left to live. It passed away soon after. After burying the bird, the kitten left the mountain for good. Never again would it cherish a single creature, nor a single blade of grass that stood on that mountain. The kitten spent the nights wandering aimlessly, gnashing its teeth at the moon. How it wished to swallow the moon and devour the moonlight. If the world could only return to darkness, then it would finally be peaceful and content. I will become the new moon, the answer to everything. Then, no one will know that there were once birds, foxes, and cats in this world. And no one can know that they were different. We solved it! <sighs> I remember now. This is not just the Balladeer story. It is his very own memories. I made a backup so that it would be preserved no matter what happened. Mm, so we can give his memories back. To become a god, he was experimented on and modified countless times. It was brutal torture, and the only reason he was able to survive is that he was a puppet. This memory was extracted from him by the scholars. Presumably, they kept it to have something to defend themselves with. Creating a deity was just the first step. Some of them wanted to be able to control it. That's why they backed up his memory for later use. I buried it deep inside one of my own dreams, and then hid it inside an allegorical story so that it wouldn't be altered. It's hard to believe that this person really existed, let alone that he tried to 
Get rid of us on more than one occasion? Paimon has no memory of him at all. He completely vanished like a puff of smoke. The Balladier agreed to help me look for information about the Descenders. And although he was unsuccessful, he still helped you. Before he vanished, he confirmed an important detail. That Conria was where your twin first came into this world. We still don't know how the change to Ermensoul will affect the senior ranks of the Fatui, mm -hmm. but in all likelihood, they won't even remember their own harbinger. I've never had this feeling before. It feels like life is as significant as ever. Yeah, it's a game here. It, it sounds is. like Paimon wouldn't like this guy a whole lot if he was still around. But still. Paimon doesn't like the way it all ended that much better. This is why Wisdom alone cannot answer all our questions. We look, we see, and we comprehend. But the question still troubles us. So the answer is not everything. People yearn to find the truth and then conquer the troubles they face. When you give someone the truth, you give them a chance to choose their own destiny. To others looking on, this may seem like a pointless endeavor, but for him, the chance to act on his desire to disappear must have meant a lot. Never forget that even when we walk beneath dark clouds along a road filled with suffering, the light of wisdom is always there, guiding us toward a better destination. And that is what you have been doing all along. Yeah, Nahid is right. Cheer up! How about we go get something to eat? We can pick up this heavy conversation again later. Good idea. Paimon, why don't you take him out for a walk to clear his head? Isn't that what she just said? You got it! Come on, Traveler! You need to get out of your head for a while. You'll feel much better after taking a walk. Let's go get a snack for one of the stalls in the Grand Bazaar! That'll be sure to lift our spirits! It must be really tough being the only one who remembers all that. But Paimon's always here to help cheer you up. There's a few things I'd like to look into. You should go take a walk and try to unwind. How um, long does it have? Oh, down there. Is it almost done? Feeling like there's something I'm missing, something important that I'm forgetting. Hey, are you gonna answer or what? So just give me a minute, I'm still processing. <sighs> Alright, whatever you want. Well, Paimon will be right here when you figure yourself out. Then we can get something to eat. Come on, Bray, let's take this out. It's got to be in there somewhere. It was something about Irmin's soul and leading oneself. Greater Lord, look at the Vata, forbidden knowledge, Nahita. What is it? Have you figured it all out? Yes, that was it. For Greater Lord, look at the Vata. She said that no one can erase themselves from existence, not even her. Otherwise, why would she need to create her own reincarnation in Lizard Lord? Because Anali to do the deletion for her. There will be no point. Uh, why'd you jump up all of a sudden? Hmm. No, I can't tell Paimon. She doesn't know about Greater Lord Bukhadevata. But this is a crucially important detail. 
it's simply not possible for the balladeer to completely erase his own existence, in which case, the question is, what happened to him? Excuse me, boss. There seems to be a small problem with the last bill. Look, here. Hey! Hey, wait! Hmm? You mean me? No, not you. That kid! Didn't you see? Little rascal grabbed my last two fresh sunsetias and ran off. Look, if you're gonna help out here, you can't keep spacing out, okay? What is it? The work's too boring for you? Or has the big city got too many distractions? I wasn't paying close enough attention. Sorry, boss. I think you're right. Maybe it's the city. It's so exciting. It can be hard to focus. Who's that guy? You know him or something? The guy is the bullet dealer. He's who? You're a strange one, kiddo. You say you don't want any money for helping out here, and then when I actually give you some work to do, you keep letting yourself get distracted. I don't want to take advantage, so I'm happy to pay you what I'd pay anyone else. But if you keep acting like this, pretty soon I won't be able to afford to. No, no, please. I mean it. You don't need to pay me anything. I'm just so thankful you agreed to take on an outsider like me. You're welcome, I guess. But I got bigger things to worry about. Look, we're all out of Sunsetias. And I promised the lady down the street I'd deliver a fruit bowl this evening. Uh, leave it to me. I'll find some more. Just a moment. I'll be right back. Stop. <sighs> I'm gonna level with you, kiddo. I've never met a worker who said they didn't want a wage before. And at first, I got greedy. Couldn't believe my luck. But I figured you'd start asking for something in return eventually. You don't want money. You don't take days off. And in your free time, all I see you do is wander around, taking in the sights. Are you a... a drifter or something? That's right, I am. Uh, we can talk more about that later. First, let me get those fruits you needed. Sunsetius, was it? I'll be right back. Hey, what do we do now? Let's follow him. Okay, stay out of sight. Don't let him see you. Okay, this is the first thing I want to make. Can he see me? Where is he? Oh, I thought it was a sneak session. This'll do. Even though you say he's the balladeer, what are we planning on doing? Stealing his sunsetias? Isn't that a bit too cruel? Ish. Oh, all right. This should be enough. Hmm. Ah, guess I should wash them before I take them back. If I wasn't seeing with my own eyes, I would never believe it. Huh? You two over there. Is there something I can help you with? Ha! He spotted us! You've been following me all the way from the city. I'd have to be blind not to notice. You're right. We were following you. Ah, have we met before? Mm, no, we haven't met. But you know me? Yes. I have no recollection. It's complicated, but I do know you. Uh, are you absolutely sure? Sorry, but I just can't take your word for it. I can prove it? How can I prove it? You're a puppet. A puppet? What makes you think that? Huh? You were right! The look on his face! 
I guess you do know me after all. That is not something I share with a lot of people. Look, I'm just a wanderer. But seeing as you've gone through all this trouble to track me down, I'm sure whatever it is must be important. There's some more I want to take you. Okay, but please let me deliver these goods to my boss first. Are you really working for that guy? He said you don't want any more for it. Is that true? Yes, I ran into him out in the wilderness during a storm. And he let me take shelter in his cart. In return, I said I'd be his helper for a while. That's oddly nice of you. Let me take these back. Then I'll come with you, okay? All right. Then let's return to the city. Hmm. Oh, we could go walking next to him and talking. I want to know his backstory in this continuity. Here you go, boss. I'll leave them right here. Oh, you really went and picked some more. Hmm. Who are these two? You know us. You have to know us. We did all that quest with... to save Nahida. Something's stuff. come up, and they need to borrow me. Sorry, boss. I'm afraid I'll be away from the stall for a while. <sighs> I was just about to pay you anyway. Go wherever you want, kid. Don't waste your time here. What? I get it, okay? You just wanted to help me out, to thank me for giving you shelter from the rain that day. Even then, I don't understand why you're so adamant that you don't want any pay for it. But look, it was pouring down and there you were, sauntering along without a care in the world. Like you had nowhere to be and didn't even care that it was raining. Imagine you were me for a second. It's a little weird, right? Why is this guy traveling during a rainstorm if he's not trying to get somewhere? And why is he taking a shortcut through the open country if he's not even in a hurry? Uh... But anyway, taking you in didn't put me out even slightly. You don't owe me a thing for it. Certainly not all this. Your time is valuable. You know, you should go live your life. Yeah, he can, he can take his time, actually. Yeah. He... But I don't... Does it have to No, eat? you're right. Then I suppose this is where we say goodbye. Thank you again for taking me into the city. Don't mention it, kiddo. I've run into all kinds of characters over the years. I just hope you find your path. It's not important, but did he got an Akasha when he was he first came to see? Thank you. All right, done. Thanks for waiting for me. We can go now. Okay, that works. My camera froze. Come on. Well. Come on.
What's wrong? Huh? Are you...? Hello. I do apologize for the sudden intrusion. We found this guy in the street, but he doesn't seem to remember anything. <laughs> so, yeah, quite an eventful walk. It's a lesser lark scenario what happened in the Green Bazaar. You say that you are trekking across to that to train yourself. Hmm. Many other Inazumans who describe themselves in this way call themselves Shugenja. Why do you refer to yourself as a wanderer? Well, it seems more relevant in my case. To me, it sounds like a plant with no roots. Hmm... It maybe has something to do with the word they actually used in Chinese. But these two claim that they know me, and that I have a hidden past unknown even to myself. I wouldn't call it the past, but rather... Uh, this is a difficult one to explain. I'd like to know what are his memories of his life. I don't like to rely on using terms like this often, but in your case, it seems that it ought to be called a previous incarnation. Oh, like a past life or something? Yes. Something far more distant than the past. So far away that you cannot perceive it. Okay. I have to ask. What was I like in my previous incarnation? Um... Uh... Oh, okay. I see. You want to tell me, but you can't bring yourselves to say it. Looks like I didn't have the most wonderful existence in my previous incarnation. We're just trying to think where to start. If it's that difficult to talk about, I have no doubt it will be just as difficult to hear. But I'll be able to handle it. Please, tell me the truth. Is truth something you care a lot about? Yes. Then I'll be straight with you. In your previous incarnation, you did many things that would be considered evil. You nearly died because of what other people did, and many died because of you. As a non-human being, you hated gods and humans alike. You drifted from place to place, never able to settle, even where you found status and identity. You adamantly believed that you were missing a heart. <sighs> Actions rooted in persistence sometimes bear bitter fruit. Sometimes, you have to let parts of yourself go, or you'll never be happy. He didn't touch the water about his past. I gave everything I had, but it barely changed history at all. In terms of the outcome alone, that's true. Hmm. I don't think I can judge everything I've heard purely in terms of right and wrong. Each choice a person makes belongs to a specific place and time, a chain of cause and effect, a cycle of karma and consequence. That is the nature of truth. If one thing is right, its opposite must be wrong. And yet, dichotomies like this are not enough to explain the world in all of its complexity. It seems like my previous incarnation wasn't the most likable individual. <laughs> We're not trying to hurt your feelings or anything, but... Yeah, we weren't your biggest fans. We're each other's enemies. If we were enemies, why are you trying to help me find the truth? Uh, this is so frustrating! This guy's supposed to be our arch enemy, but now he's just some random stranger we met on the street! He's got so much to answer for, but we can't make him talk because he doesn't remember anything. Ugh, what a weird situation. Lesser Lord Kusanali, as the God of Wisdom, I trust that everything you told me must be true. Yes, it's all true. I can even show you the memories themselves, if you're willing. 
Please, I want to see them for myself. I want to experience my own transgressions. Hmm, I think you could have folded that memory to show us now. If you have... Even though it will cause your present self great mental anguish? Oh, I'm just a puppet. With no heart and no name. There is nothing in this world for me to cling to. To fill the void within me. Except maybe these sins that can never be undone. Very well. As you wish. Wait, shouldn't we go with him? This one's kind of on us for bringing him here. Don't worry. Whatever danger I might face, it's my burden to bear. Traveler, could I ask you to supervise him on my behalf? Okay. Oh, good point. Given your, um, unique situation, we'd better keep an eye on you. Understood. <sighs> Thank you. Now, prepare yourselves, everyone. Hmm. No matter what lies ahead, I'll face it. Whatever it takes. I'm just sorry that you have to join me for the whole thing. It's time to get ready. Oh. Um. Oh. Um. Oh. Um. You know what? I think I'll stop here. Because I think this would probably take a little while. At least half an hour more, but I guess more. So, I'll... I guess I can continue tomorrow. But yeah, I'm gonna stop here. And, I don't know, let's just... Roll it once and see if I can get one. Yeah, no. But alright. I'm gonna stop here and continue tomorrow if I can. <laughs>